Welcome back to our newest feature, The Conversation Continues, where we answer even more of your questions with Professor Jeremy Kagan. Jeremy, let's get started. Very honest, blunt question came in from Suzanne. Is traditional marketing dead? Well, I, I, I'm a digital marketing guy. I just wrote a book on it. And the answer is a resounding no. That's exactly the opposite of what we're trying to convey here. The truth is digital marketing is just integrated irreversibly into the fabric of everything. We're all spending a ton of time on our iPads, on our laptops, on our phones. In fact, when we see a, a huge commercial on the Super Bowl, uh, we notice a huge spike at the same time of website visits. So traditional marketing, if anything, is uh, interlinked inextricably with digital marketing. You need digital marketing to leverage the dollars you're spending on television and anything else. If there's a guy outside handing out flyers, you can be sure people are searching on the web to find out what it's all about. Right. At the same time, what you see over and over again in consumer products, in pretty much any category, is as new companies form, they go digital for their marketing and growth first, their brand growth. Dollar Shave Club, for example, they didn't go and start to do sampling in a bunch of supermarkets and try to do a bunch of TV commercials. They made a funny video, yeah. they did a lot of viral marketing, and they got subscriptions online. And that was a critical way to build their brand. Um, Warby Parker started online, Casper. And yet also, I guess a corollary to that is many of these companies are now coming back into the real world and opening up stores, or sometimes they call them guide shops, right. which are really physical manifestations of that brand they built online so that the customer can interact and they can expand the pool. But they have the choice. They do. They have they the do. choice. So the traditional advertising is just a conduit to new advertising. To right, it's a new broader, product, yeah. and, and it need, it, you need a broader base to leverage it. But once you're, you know, you've eliminated some of the easier, sort of more low-hanging fruit of digital channels that are easier to track, measure, and convert, you need to expand that pool if you want to continue your growth. Very good. Well, Suzanne, rest assured, traditional marketing is not dead. <laughs> All right, another question from Mark. If you had the resources to dedicate to tackle all three phases of the process at once, how would you prioritize? Well, I think uh, this, this is kind of a backwards question. First of mm -hmm. all, every company start, sort of goes through the discovery phase to figure out if they've got a product market fit. You can't really do the same things as you do with the other two phases. Mm -hmm. Once you've figured it all out, then it's about getting your operation really efficient. We're looking at the middle there, growth. And the important thing of growth is there's a marketing funnel, and at every stage along the way, you can come up with great ideas that are operationally of what you could change. And the important thing is in what you think it will impact. So if we raise our prices, we will maybe convert some, uh, some small amount less of people, right. but we'll have more revenue. Right. That's an that's a idea you have and you can test. If you have a bunch of ideas, you could, in theory, test them all. The real challenge is nobody, at least nobody I've met at a startup, has unlimited resources. Right. There's never enough people to do all the tasks, and there's never enough time or money. So what you really need to do is take the implied benefits there. Mm -hmm. So I think if I do this, this is what will happen. Very much like we you know, talk about that high school science experiment right. where you have this idea of what's going to happen, and then you test it. And so what you can do before you do that is figure out the potential impact. So if you have a really big idea, but it's not going to have a big potential outcome, well, then it's not worth doing ahead of an idea that is an important and potentially huge source of leverage. Right. So a lot of times, for example, it could be, hey, if we make our web page better, maybe we'll convert 1% more people to sales. That can actually have a real big impact on the bottom line, as opposed to making a slightly better banner ad or something right. like that. Right. Great, great, thank you. All right, last question uh, from Kunal. Do you have an example of how metrics can be important? Yeah, you know what, there's a great way to look at this. Um, for example, like subscription businesses, like mm -hmm. software as a service, or a lot of these boxes we say, um, like the subscription food boxes, or, or even Dollar Shave Club. But the most important thing to think about there is their problem, which might not be obvious at the beginning, mm -hmm. is actually managing a couple of very important metrics. So the first thing you need to know is, how many customers can you get a month? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's say you find a couple of ways to get customers, and you're getting 1,000 customers a month. That's great. And if the cost is low and the lifetime value seems reasonable, you could have a business there. How big your business is going to get is actually dependent on a key metric that might not seem that important in the beginning. And it's how many customers leave you every month, churn. Mm -hmm. So that's going to actually impact your lifetime value very, very specifically because however long you keep those customers is how much money you make. Right. Now, not only that, 
if you start getting a thousand customers a month in the beginning you're this is great we're doubling our business and it's growing and more and more people are coming in but you remember the churn number is actually dependent on everybody so the bigger your base of customers get the more that are leaving every month mm -hmm. and unless you're constantly increasing the amount of people that you bring in you're going to eventually hit a point where the amount of new customers coming in the door is less than the people leaving. Right. In which it's case, just attrition. Yeah. yeah and at that point, the only choice you have is figuring out ways to keep people longer. Right. Maybe it's, you know, coming up with a stickier product or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But the, the churn rate actually is the single determinant, in, well, one of the most important determinants of your ultimate size as a company. Right. Because if you don't determine what that is, you don't know where you can go. Planning to be worth a billion dollars doesn't really matter if you haven't solved that problem. And is there a difference between how you approach the people who are coming in to the people who possibly will come out? I mean, do you, you know, is there a specific way you approach them differently? Well, there's, I mean, that's a very multi-layered question. I mean, if the question is, how do you treat new customers versus existing mm -hmm. customers? First of all, once you get to the point where this is a problem, you should have different teams thinking about these problems. Mm -hmm. But generally, the challenge is um, trying to figure out if there's different ways to segment these customers into into either pricing plans or products that are more appropriate that will individually keep them longer and create a higher value for them. Because the things that may be right for one might not be right for another. Right. But ultimately, the challenge of keeping a customer is about getting them to stick around just a little bit longer, to pay a little bit more, to grow as a customer, as opposed to what makes them pull the trigger and become a customer in the first place. Right. So Great. it's two different problems. Two different problems. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for sticking around for The Conversation Continues. And thank all of you for joining us today with Professor Jeremy Kagan. We hope to see you again. Thank you.